small version. Yeah, it was just a small two, version. Yeah, there's a two 3DS XL, which I've always wanted a small version because I love the face plates and the size of it. Um, but we never got it here in the West. Um, I think we so, got a few. Uh, yeah, but they're, edition ones. they're sort of like the collector's edition. I, I was a bigger fan of the black one than the white one, and the only way you could get the black one was through Amazon. And you know how those Amazon and Nintendo related limited products tend to be. Mm-hmm. Um, so essentially, I believe that the thing they were canceling production was on the small 3DS because most people were just buying the larger one, period. Yeah. Um, and um, speaking of Amazon, do you think that you're probably going to try and import the um, deluxe edition of Samus oh, of Returns? Of course. I heard um, the <laughs> European Nintendo site has actually put up pre-orders again. For yeah, I, I've sort of been up and off about it. Um, I'm still trying to save up money, so worst case scenario, I can pay some eBay scalper for it because the physical stuff that it comes with makes it it's all the well worth it for it. me. It's well worth it. Because um, I, I really want that, you know, that Morph Ball keychain, that sort of... Um, hard covered case that's the metroid 2 i'm just really ticked off that it's just a limited between one only it's a worldwide release but you're only doing this for one um region why not put it for all regions yeah that's so it's, one of the it's, stupidest it's, reasons like if 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 the collector's edition was simply the the one they showed on the treehouse that we get here in the west I would have been happy with it. I would have been happy if there was none of this. The, this all of this extra things are just bonus that are making my wallet hurt. Um, but uh, being a, a Metroid sort of collectionist myself, mm-hmm. and um, collector, I should say, and so most likely than not, because yeah, I I don't live in the U.S. at the moment. Um, it would be a little bit harder for me to import something from Europe to the point that like, I'd rather save up the money and pay, pay some eBay scalper once I'm in the U.S. for a while. Yeah. Cause... And, um, like, I, I collect um, a lot of Metroid things, too. I, I have two copies of the Prime Trilogy because I got the yeah. standard one, and then I was at a local pawn shop, and I found, a, uh, I found the steel sleeve yeah. version of it. So I was like, oh, I got to get that. Don't don't get me started with my my collections. It's getting a little bit ridiculous, if you ask me. Yeah, um, like I was there one had... day one to get the Samus amiibo when the amiibos first came out. She was in. Uh, I I didn't I didn't get it because um, see here's the thing. I have a younger brother, and we both are big Nintendo's fans. But we kind of have a rule that after a specific date, we won't buy a game until Christmas. So that way, we can give it for each other as Christmas presents and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously, Samus was within those, um, uh, the Amiibos and whatnot. But my brother did buy it ahead of time. I just didn't receive it until it was Christmas. Yeah. Which, to be fair, it was made Christmas all the more special when you opened Samus on Christmas. Yeah. Um, like, so I remember it, the Christmas when Amiibos came out. Oh it was God. That was all that was there. That was it. Yeah. I, I remember. It was that pro- and, like. It was that and Smash. That that, Smash was, it. that was it. Yeah, that was that was my Christmas. That was our Christmas as well. Just that game and and the Amiibos. And and even then, I I still like Amiibos simply because it's the only way I can get some figures out of some of my other favorite Nintendo characters like Captain Falcon, um, the Star Fox crew, Ganondorf. That I know that I couldn't get a figure any other way. Um, mm-hmm. And so. I, I still remember that in my case with say my collection, I I I basically have three copies of the Steel Book Metroid Prime trilogy. Mm-hmm. Um, one of them is still sealed, brand new. Yeah, um, I haven't found a sealed one, but oh my god, I I hope I never do because I will. <laughs> yeah, I, I like, will I, just I, buy it. I have all the I have all the Prime games, um, sealed, including the trilogy version. I have their Japanese versions. I have um, some of them signed by Jennifer Hale, which voices Samus in the Prime games. Mm-hmm. Um, and the list goes on and, and, and on and on. So when, uh, and, when um, I have all the Metroid games and like their Japanese, their U- EU, and their American versions, um, and they bring this new one, I'm, you know, I got to get it because if not, my collection is technically kind of incomplete because I even bought Federation Force EU because the cover is just way cooler than the one we got in the U.S. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I think the most amazing thing that I have personally found regarding Metroid was at a GameStop, I found a demo cart for Prime Hunters for $5. Oh, the, the first hunt? Yep. The, uh, it was the I first got... hunt, and it was um, $5. And I was like, oh my yeah. god, 5 for that? Really? Well, because it, it came bundled with the original Nintendo DSs. Mm -hmm. um, the, it, what I was happy was that I was able to find a Hunter's First Hunt with a quote-unquote case. Because when you bought the original DS and it came bundled with the first hunt, it came on a sleeve of sorts. So it's the closest thing we got to a box for it. Yeah, mine didn't have the sleeve. It was just, you know, how they yeah, package was, used DS games. I was right? recently able to find one with a sleeve at, like, a local old-school retro game store. Mm. Um, so I was just happy to be able to find that because now, now I can rest DC. Yeah. Um, I guess, in my case, the most am amazing things I have... Not counting the overly priced first four figures Samus stuff, like the light suit. Mm -hmm. um, might be like the original Famicom Metroid, and like having all the versions of the NES Metroid game. So like the gray box, the, the yellow box, the Game Boy port, the Japanese Game Boy port, the EU Game Boy port, the EU version. So I have like all the box covers for that game. Yeah, um, I... Um... I haven't started collecting things that are outside of um, the US. North America region. Yeah. The North American region. But I, I will some definitely the... look into that once I have everything from the North yeah, American Yeah, fortunately looking into the Japanese stuff is not overly expensive and not overly difficult because Japanese people keep a lot of stuff from the old days. Mm -hmm. um, it's simply that some of the games, when I was trying to get my collector's collection kind of going, um, was a little bit more difficult to find was the a European box version of Metroid NES um, because I used to work in the UK for um, the, the previous year um, and that was like the only way I was able to find it was by like eBay UK and even then I had to find it like at a decent price that I could afford it um but it, it's it's kind of funny that sometimes there'd be like a new game that's coming out and I would not get the game because instead I want to get just like a random piece of Metroid memorabilia or collection. Mm -hmm. So so that's and, the whole um, reason why I might be skipping the SNES media to begin with. Yeah. The, um, I saw some, I actually think you were the one to post this, that GameStop is posting, like they have a yeah, keychain. The keychain, yeah. The yeah. keychain. And that is driving me insane because... Um, now we're going to have to get two copies of the same game. Yeah, I, like, I am begging that one of my friends gets it on GameStop and is generous enough to either donate it or sell it to me. Um, yeah. Probably will be the case because all my, my, my close friends know how much of a Metroid addict they are. They, I, in my house, they have a, the shelf, as my friends like to call it, where I just have all my Metroid stuff on display. Um, so they would always be like, this is for the shelf. So for me, it was just painful because I've been living in the U.S. for like the past four or five years and no new Metro game comes out. The moment I have to move out of the U.S. is when the new Metro comes out with all these extra little things that I can only get in the U.S. And it's driving me insane. And that was um, Corruption that came out? Um, would it have been that? No, it, no, no games because it was like right after Other End was released. Oh. Okay. So so it was like Federation Force. <laughs> oh. I, I, w what were the pre-order bonuses on that? I don't even remember. None. <laughs> oh. It was only on Nintendo UK where you got like a, a very cheap plastic mouse pad that doesn't really work. A mouse pad and, for a DS game? <laughs> yeah, it, the UK version came in... Uh, if you bought the in, out of Nintendo UK, you would receive a mouse pad with a poster of the game. It just that just seems very weird with, to me that they'd include a mouse post. pad. Hey, I, I still have it because it's got Metroid on it. Yeah, it's the only way I got it. it. It's like if you ever want to sell something to me, put Samus or Metroid in it, and it's in, an automatic buy. Yeah, like I, like, I just um... was able to find the Uniqlo Metroid shirt, um, because again, when you don't live in the U.S. or any other places like that, you're when I got there, it was like, oh, we've already stopped production on that shirt. So I had to order it 
all the way from Japan. Um, which if you ever do so, buy a size larger than yours. So like if you're a small, buy a medium. Or or so, because Japanese shirts are tiny. Yeah. Um, so it's it's very it's been very kind of frustrating that uh I'm getting new Metroid games, yeah, but I can't get any of the cool stuff because they're not coming over to um Central America, which is where I'm living at the moment. Yeah, that's um, um we're we're still getting the game and the amiibos, but it's not the the same thing. Yeah, and I like I never really understood why they don't do that cuz like there's definitely a market for them there. Yeah, it's it's, it's like kind collectors of like, are everywhere. Yeah, I know we're going to get the I know we're most likely going to get the amiibos and the collectors edition over here, but none of these smaller bonuses like you get a keychain, you get a poster you get a a free swag when you pre-order your game and i and i love the keychain because it's not some stupid dlc thing that should have been in the game it's just like a physical thing i get mm-hmm. to use um and so... um earlier when i was playing prime three uh someone in the chat pointed out to me that um how you're you're talking with that like brain thing that's a part of the federation yeah the Aurora and then it units. uh yeah the i keep forgetting what they're called i just i wasn't paying attention nope, to names course. very much and um like it tells you that it has discovered a federation um uh landing site on there and so uh the guy in chat said hmm the federation just discovered a landing site from their own landing sites yeah so it's it's one of those silly things. Yeah. I, I have a feeling that was like a lost in translation thing. Yeah, probably. Like it in it's probably supposed to be like, oh Sam, it's just so you know there's a site that you can go exactly. upgrade your ship I, at I over feel, here. I feel like uh if 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 it's the one Umbrio, I feel like it was more like that, like, oh by it the was. way we have that. Yeah, yeah, okay. So yeah, I always took it like, oh by the way, there's a landing site we um that and and all that i can kind of understand because you know in corruption they hire samus to do a job sort of independently because they're the, the federation are technically waging a war against the pirates so to me it kind of makes sense to why they didn't tell you immediately because the aurora unit especially 242 is kind of like focused more on the centralized on the space pirate attacks mm-hmm. and it's like oh shit we forgot to tell samus yeah and like uh, I thought um Dark Samus had like telepathically taken control of the other hunters that were around there until yeah. I actually um I accidentally died from the phase on overload and I was like exactly. oh no she's turned them into her Yeah that I always thought that was a cool like game over like oh full corruption that makes sense i i actually i didn't remember the game over screen from prime 3 and that's really dark like the blood dripping down on her visor yeah and it's even darker it's just equally dark with like echoes where they show you like internal organ failure yeah <laughs> i remember yeah. when I, I was when i played like is that one of the like, scans or is that like a message no no that's you? the game over screen it shows because like, i remember one of samus's organs just like shutting off <laughs> I remember I gotta find this image now because it was amazing. It's the, it's the Echoes game over screen, and I'm like, you know, twelve when I'm playing this game, and I just died, and you hear a, a terrifying scream, and the screen goes to black, and then they show you this with like a flat line sound effect, and that yeah. like, scarred me for life. I was too afraid of dying in the game. It, it's crazy what they do sometimes in these games. Yeah. Uh, it, it's part of the reasons why I love uh, uh, the Metro Prime series, though. Yeah, it's it's just such an amazing series, gameplay wise. How it just has just the right amount of story. It's it's like the perfect series. It's it's the it's it's what I feel to be like one of the perfect games in terms of creating atmosphere, um, making you feel like you're the you become Samus. Mm-hmm. And they sort of take it, that feeling away whenever you see her ref- the reflection of her eyes or a grunt because one of the attacks, um, which the are she... really, um, like really, what's the word I'm looking for? 
forced in corruption.